basic overview of what the PXI platform is um, as a platform for instrumentation. Um, and you know, with its, I guess, relatively recent growth in the industry um, as a uh, instrumentation platform, I, I want to understand who is really aware of PXI and who's used PXI uh, for instruments. Okay, so a couple of people I know this guy over here has. Um, so in case you didn't know, uh, PXI stands for PCI Extensions for Instrumentation. Uh, by the way, I'm Chris White. I work for National Instruments. Come see us at the Big Blue Booth. Um, so just at a high level, I'm going to go through kind of, you know, I call it the anatomy, so there's uh, some very loose association with the human body. <laughs> but uh, so we'll, we'll walk through the three main components of a PXI system, and that's uh, chassis with backplane, data fabric, timing, and synchronization. Um, we'll go through those, um, PXI controllers, and these peripheral modules. But just to start, the um, PXI specification is managed by what's called the PXI System Alliance. Um, that is a uh, group of about 70 um, different instrumentation companies that maintain the specification. And you can get the spec for free at pxisa.org. Um, and this defines the software, mechanical, and electrical uh, specifications for this um, PXI standard. So this is just to give you an overview of some of these modular platforms that have sort of evolved over the years. Um, you know, some of them came on the scene and kind of died out, like you see VME there at the bottom. Um, and really what, what you notice is that PXI was born from the uh, PCI Express, or excuse me, P Compact PCI uh, standard there around uh, 1998. So it's started with original PXI. We've moved on to PXI Express, um, on to PXI Express 2.0, and soon to be a uh, path to PXI Express 3.0, all based on um, the PCI Express uh, standard for data fabric. So um, to give you an idea of where we've been and kind of where we're going, I say we, but the uh, standard itself, um, this gives you a good idea of the growth over the past few years of the standard itself in, in terms of its uh, volume in the industry. And you'll notice that some of its competing modular uh, platforms like uh, VXI are starting to kind of taper off and a lot of that probably has to do with the size of those uh, instruments themselves. But um, this is a Frost and Sullivan forecast and you know, it takes it out to be about an 18% over you know, the next few years, 18% compound annual growth rate. Um, so that just gives you a good idea of sort of the sort of, I guess, almost exponential growth curve that it's following um, as more and more adoption is being seen uh, throughout the industry. So the, um, the platform overall is, like I mentioned, is really comprised of sort of three or four, you could say, uh, main components. And the first is the chassis. This is our shell. This provides all the, the physical connections. Um, the next on that chassis is the PXI backplane where we have data bus, timing and synchronization, system management bus, and uh, of course power and cooling, uh, which are very, very important for these compact instruments that you know, tend to generate a lot of heat depending on what you're doing. Next thing is the uh, controller, and that can be an embedded PC, as you see in this image, or a remote PC that's connected up to, um, you know, to this system through what's called an MXI connection. And it can also be a laptop interface um, using an express card that just plugs into the side of, uh, of your laptop there. And finally, we have uh, our peripheral modules. And you know, this can be an infinite number of different uh, combinations of modules that, that you're creating for your specific test application. So just to start, and this is where I get into the anatomy part of it. <laughs> Um, like I said, very loose. The, the chassis itself is uh, really the bones of your PXI system. It provides all your standard connections, um, power, the, has the data fabric in, embedded in the back plane, um, and signaling interfaces, as well as the, uh, the power and cooling. Um, so the original PXI standard uh, required 25 watts of, of cooling capacity. Um, with PXI Express, it was bumped then to 30 watts. And, You'll find some chassis out there that are actually even more. Some of the National Instruments chassis that we offer go up to about 38 and a quarter watts. So um, it's, you know, exceed the specification if possible. And some 
types of modules you know, benefit from that if they uh, run a little bit warmer. So the backplane itself, um, you'll notice, has really three main, um, three main components. Um, the timing and synchronization bus, uh, the data fabric bus, which is based on our compact PCI or uh, PCI Express, and system management bus, um, which is good for health monitoring of your modules, um, you know, checking temperatures of individual modules, making sure we're modulating fans um, ap appropriately based on the needs of your, uh, you know, the needs and the health of your system in general. We're not going to talk about that one, but the other two we'll go into a little more detail here. So on the data fabric side, uh, like I mentioned, originally PXI was uh, introduced with a 32-bit PCI bus, and that's a uh, shared bus architecture, so you actually are sharing data bandwidth across all the modules in that system, which is, is fairly limiting. Um, and then with the introduction of P PCI Express, we now have a switched uh, bus architecture, which creates um, you know, endpoint, you know, point to point uh, uh, dedicated data lanes. And these are lanes that are a, uh, a pair of serial transmit and receive uh, paths and those particular lanes can actually be um, paired together to create, um, uh, you know, what's called like a by one, by two, by four, by eight, by sixteen to increase the bandwidth um, on a per slot basis. And so you'll see in this image we have a, a by eight uh, link going to uh, PCI switch and then being split out between these different modules or these different slots. Um, so. Originally, um, with this type of architecture, originally PCI, uh, the original PCI Express um, specification provided a per lane uh, data bandwidth of 250 megabytes per second. And with PCI Express 2.0, that was doubled to 500 megabytes per second. And then, um, you know, with the soon, I guess, release of PCI Express 3.0, that's going to go up to almost a gigabyte per second per lane. So if you start ganging up these uh, these lanes in sort of a by 16 fashion, you can see that you could have almost almost 16 gigabytes per second of data throughput on a single slot, which is um, pretty impressive, really, and you know would be very useful for uh, new applications for I don't know you know monitoring the spectrum of this place uh, all day just to see that nobody's uh, out there um, you know generating any unwanted signals or something like that. Um, so wideband acquisitions. You're going to have a ton of data you need to stream back and process later um, in your record. So um, that, that adds a lot of uh, flexibility to this type of system. Now, another thing that's really uh, a, sort of a key benefit of this switched architecture on PCI Express uh, backplane is the ability to stream data to your peers. So you can um, send data from you, you know, the, the module that's actually acquiring the data to maybe a, uh, an FPGA coprocessor that's in coprocessor that's in the adjacent slot and uh, maybe you have some inline DSP or FFTs you're going to operate on uh, inline and that uh, has this really low latency between slots and um, removes the requirement for you to send that data all the way back to your host processor and then potentially back to an FPGA to do processing. It's a very efficient uh, method for processing. So the next um, the next uh, component here on the backplane is your timing and synchronization um, features. And so you have a bunch of different routes. There are a couple of different clocks. There's a 10 megahertz clock, which came with the legacy um, PXI system. And there's now a 100 megahertz differential uh, reference clock. And so these are maybe, it could be an OCXO, a TCXO, or you know, uh, a, a different um, relatively stable reference clock that you can sync up a bunch of modules on. You also have um, differential triggers that you can share between modules for really precise um, triggering uh, for your generation and, and analysis. And this becomes really important um, in certain applications. So one of those applications is envelope tracking. And envelope tracking, I don't know how familiar with envelope tracking everybody is, but we're essentially modulating the um, supply line on our power amplifier and the, the waveform that we're using to modulate that supply line needs to be in really tight synchronization, time synchronization, with the RF waveform that's being generated through that power amplifier. And so you can see um, 
the arbitrary waveform generator that's going into our power modulator needs to be really tightly synchronized in time with this RF generator. And so some of these timing and synchronization features on the back plane um, enable that type of you know, picosecond um, level synchronization. And like I mentioned as well, the trigger sharing between your generator and your analyzer to be able to um, trigger the analysis at precisely the right time. You don't waste a bunch of additional uh, memory you know, on uh, processing unwanted data. You can capture just the segment that you need in time. So looking at the PXI controller, this is really the brain of your system and it's built on what I'll call a scalable computing technology and by that I mean that it is built on you know, the latest processing technologies that are on the market. So your latest Intel processor or AMD processor. And as time goes on and those get better and better and, and provide you with more processing power, more cores, uh, whatever the case may be, those technologies get rolled into these, uh, th these um, embedded uh, PC processors here. And so what you can see is actually that uh, since the first one of these embedded PCs was released, we've seen a over 240x improvement in processing power in terms of gigaflops. So that's, that's pretty impressive right there. I mean, it means that as your processing needs grow with you know, the increased amount of data that you're acquiring, these processors, you know, these controllers, these embedded PCs will be able to keep up with that. And the last thing um, in this system is these peripheral modules. These are really the senses um, of your system. And you know, there's more than 1,500 different types of modules out there from these 70 vendors and probably more. Um, and so there's too, there's too many really to talk about anyone in, in, uh, specifically. There's you know, RF modules, data acquisition, digital, switching, you name it, you can find it and integrate it into this one system. But there's one thing to be really careful of and that is uh, making sure that you understand your physical interfaces that are connecting into your chassis so that you're getting the right module uh, in the right form factor for that chassis. So I just wanted to call, call them out really quickly so everybody's aware and you don't make this mistake when you're purchasing. Um, but the, uh, or the first one is a standard PXI slot and this provides your power and trigger buses, uh, your 10 megahertz clock, and then that shared 32-bit um, PCI, compact PCI bus. And you'll notice that's common between this hybrid and standard slots. The difference between those two is this, what's called a local bus, which actually gives you access to your neighbor, uh, your neighbor slot. And then, of course, with the hybrid slot, we have to now support the PCI Express uh, differential um, signaling there. And differential signaling was introduced in uh, uh, the PCI Express because it gives you better noise immunity for these really high rates that uh, data throughput that, you, that you're getting there. And then uh, in the PXI Express slot, Obviously, we don't need the, um, the uh, shared bus, uh, the shared 32-bit PCI, compact PCI bus. So, just to recap, um, you know, PXI and PXI Express has really grown on the scene as a standard, um, in large part, I think, to its flexibility and its integration. Uh, there are features on backplane technologies that allow tight synchronization and low uh, data latency that allow you to uh, you know, have really tight control over all the modules in the system at the same time. They all know what each other are doing. And um, you know, as the, uh, the needs for processing increase, these um, processors um, also scale with that need. Um, and then you know, the last thing is we have uh, an infinite, um, essentially, combination of different modules that we can um, push together and create a really customized system for whatever the application may be. So, any questions? Now you're all experts on PXI. All right, thanks for coming. Thank